Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to the channel. It is Sunday afternoon and I have not been able to do much all weekend long. Um, let me go back out here because my garage door is pretty loud. Uh, I had a few mowers that I had to get serviced, so I needed to get those done yesterday and today and get those back to their owners. So um, going to be doing my valve lash today. And it's just something that I wanted to do while I had my valve cover off, especially. And then also show you guys some things too. You know, there is a pretty easy way to do this. Um, you need, th there's a paper online that you can print out. I have one that I keep on just in my documents on my computer. And then also if you wanted to, you could print it out and keep it wherever you want. It's this paper right here. Um, I'll try and find um, the website and put it in the description. Uh, it does say 03 to 07, but they're pretty much all the same. So intake is 10 thousandths, exhaust is 20 thousandths, and then you do need to have your uh, motor at top dead center. To get that motor at top dead center, some engines do have a mark on the harmonic balancer down in there that you can check and have that at top dead center but you got to make sure that you're on the right stroke so to make sure that you're on the right stroke to check your to check your valve lash is they're also right here if you take your breather off your crankcakes breather there's this mark right here it says tdc which is top dead center and then on your vp44 gear your ve gear your CP3 gear, whatever it may be, there'll be a mark on that gear also, and then you just line those two up. So when you get it, and I already have my engine set at top dead center, to make sure that you're on the right stroke to do your first set of valves, is you just come in here and you reach and you feel. You can see how those are loose. See how that exhaust valve is tight. So I gotta look at my paper because I don't remember for certain. Um, at this top dead center stroke, you can do one, two uh, intake and exhaust. And then I believe it's two on the intake and three on the exhaust, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not 100% certain. And then you'll rotate your engine um, 360 degrees again. To top dead center and get on the next stroke to do the rest of your valves um, if you don't know what valves are which it's pretty easy to look at your short valves or your intake valves and your long valves or your exhaust valves now to know that is all you got to do is right here is your exhaust manifold and you can see how here you can see this one better here you can see how this lines up right here and then just go straight across to here you can see that this right here is your exhaust valve so um, what you're going to be measuring let me go grab my feeler gauges now like I said the intake is ten thousandths what you're actually going to be measuring is right in between here and you just want just a little bit of grab on there see that one's pretty loose you just want to measure that and get just a little bit of grab so to tighten that up you'll loosen this lock nut up which is a 14 millimeter and then this is an allen head i believe it's a five millimeter and then you'll turn that till you get just a little bit of drag i'm getting ahead of myself i'm getting ahead of myself too um to get your engine turned to top dead center a lot of guys will take and use the alternator bolt and i believe that is i have it laying over here that is a 15 sixteenths what that alternator bolt is and then you can just put your breaker bar right on there and turn that if you need to you can put just a little bit of pressure on the belt i do have a barring tool but i just don't have it put on yet um, there's two types of barring tools that you can pick up one is this one right here from fleece performance and that goes on the harmonic balancer down uh, in front you just pull your four bolts out of there and then you put this one back in place then you use a half inch breaker bar just like that and then that will turn your engine and then there's also another type of barring tool and you can't see clear back in there on the adapter plate 
there is a little rubber hard plastic cap plug that you pull out of there and then you stick a, a, a rod in there that has threads on it threads no i'm sorry has gears on it and then you also use a half inch wrench and you can turn the flywheel to get your engine at top dead center so there's actually three different ways if you wanted to to get your engine at top dead center the easiest and the most quickest is just to put the 15 16 on your alternator and if you need to push on the belt just a little bit just be careful you don't get your fingers in there and get them pinched and, and then turn it to top dead center um, and then you can go through and check your valves. Just make sure you're starting on the right stroke to start with one, two, uh, I'll go grab my paper here. Um, so the first one you'll check at that is on the intake is one, two, four. On the exhaust is one, three, and five on that first top dead center. And then you rotate it 360 degrees again and check three, five, and six on the intake, and then two, four, and six on the exhaust. So, and then like I said, the intake gets set at 10 thousandths, and the exhaust gets set at 20 thousandths. So, um, I'll do the first one here real quick. I do have supper in the oven too, but this way you can get an idea on, um, how the adjustment is done. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is, I've got my feeler gauge in here, and like I said, on this stroke here, top dead center, we're going to intake, we're gonna be doing one, two, and back here, four. So if you don't know, it's these two valves is one, these two valves is two, and these two valves is three, and so on and so on. So, like I said, on this stroke here, you're gonna be doing the intake valve, which is number one, the intake valve for number two, and the intake valve back here for number four. So, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, you loosen up this jam nut. Oh my. Just like so, and those are really, really tight. And then you're, you can turn this to loosen everything up. See how that get, you can, I don't know if you can see how that valve is going up and down. So you're just gonna to wanna to turn that just until you get drag on your feeler gauge. And you can feel it, you probably can't hear it, but you can feel, if you go too tight, see I can't move it at all. Just back it off just a little bit, and then just tighten until you got just enough drag. And that's pretty good right there. So then just hold on to your Allen wrench and tighten everything up. Just like so. And you can see how I have just enough drag on that one there. And then you'll move on to number two. And do the same thing. That's too tight. Back it off just a little bit. This drag there, hang on to your Allen wrench and tighten everything up. <laughs> That's probably just a little bit too loose yet. So, and then you'll continue on doing that for the rest of your intake and exhaust. And like I said, I keep my paper right here. Every time I do this, I do print out that paper and I do bring it out with me. That way I can keep it right here and I can reference back to it and see which ones I need to do. The reason why you adjust your valves is because when you start your engine, you know, it's cold. And as it heats up, the metals and stuff expand. So you want to have just a lit, and that's why when you first start your engine, it's a little bit loud. And then after it warms up, you know, all that chatter goes away because that metal expands and it closes that gap. So another thing, you know, I've been telling you guys that I'm going to have to pick up a new uh, V-band clamp. I was able to take and cut that end off that I broke off and then taper them edges and get a nut started on there. So I'm hoping that there's enough thread left 
that we can still utilize that. If not, I'll have to go pick one up. But it looks to me like I'll be able to utilize this clamp still, possibly. I think I'm just gonna have just enough threads to get and utilize that. So I, that should work. I should be able to utilize this clamp. And then once I tighten it up, I'll have about two to three threads sticking out, which is pretty good. Um, I don't have that on yet because I do want to still remove my exhaust manifold and um, get that painted up and also change out the hardware. I don't know. If anybody knows, please comment below and let me know why Cummins runs these spacers on these bolts. You know, when you put on this BD Power uh, three-piece exhaust manifold, you change these center four because of the humps in there. I don't know why you have to run them spacers and them longer bolts. I'm gonna switch mine out. Um, before I switch them out, if somebody knows, comment below and let me know. And, you know, I and tell me what I don't know because I don't understand why you have to have those spacers in there. So I hope that helped somebody, you know, as far as the valve lash, I'm not gonna go through it and show everybody. Um, you know, I showed you on them first couple and then, you know, it's pretty easy to go from there. So, you know, just to recap, I try and put a link for this paper below. Um, I did save it to my documents then, and then that way I can refer back to it anytime that I wanna do my valve lash on this truck and any other truck. So powder coat should be done hopefully Tuesday. I can get it picked up and do my first test fire on the truck and get it back on the road. Man, I cannot wait. I've been driving that little Ford Ranger for about six weeks now and um, I'm chomping at the bit to get my truck back on the road. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you. Hey, by the way, I like the new t-shirt or sweatshirt. So, uh, something a little bit different than the, uh, West Coast Choppers sweatshirt. So check them out online, hotshotssecret.com or there's a link in the description. Just hit me up down there and I'll take care of you. Anything you want. Don't forget coupon code CM73 for something free. Uh, everybody likes something free, don't they? So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not already done so. And we will talk to you guys later on. Bye-bye.